Hello, welcome to PC Jack. A few weeks back, I reviewed Noctua's NA212A Chromax Black, and while it performed exceptionally during testing, I compared it greatly to Noctua's existing AHD15 Chromax Black in terms of value. So I asked you guys if you'd like to see the NA212A tested directly against the NHD15 to see which one comes out on top, and a lot of you were really interested in that. So I reached out to Noctua, who kindly agreed to send out the NHD15 for me to test, and I may have made a mistake. In my review of the NH212A, I claimed that while it was a great cooler, the NHD15 would actually outperform it under load. So, to see if this was actually the case, I ran the exact same test that I ran on the NH212A, which, if you aren't aware, was a 15 minute multi core stress test running the Ryzen 5 5600X at 4.8GHz at around 1.325 volts, and that gives us a roughly 115 watt load to dissipate. And the results may surprise you. The average temperature while running both coolers at 50% fan speed saw a nearly 5C increase when using the NHD15 and around a 4C increase to the maximum temperature over the NH212A. Kicking both up to 100% fan speed, we saw an increase to the average and maximum temperature of again around 5C, staying fairly consistent with the increase we saw at 50% fan speed. In terms of noise levels, while both are exceptional at maintaining performance at lower RPMs and noise levels, the NH212A came out on top with a slim victory over the NHD15, which had the highest noise levels between the two. So from this testing, the NH212A has beaten the NHD15. But how did this happen? Surely with the NHD15's larger design and larger fans, we should have seen an increase in performance. Well, there's a few other variables that we actually need to consider. While the tests are identical, there is the issue of replicating ambient room temperature, which in my office is quite difficult to achieve. So this could potentially contribute towards the extra degree or two during testing. Secondly, while both coolers were installed correctly, there is the potential that both coolers had slightly different mounting pressure due to the overall surface flatness of the mounting plate. Considering both coolers are manufactured by Noctua though, I wouldn't assume there's much variation between the two base plates really. This can be offset by thermal face filling in the little microscopic gaps on the actual IHS and the base plate, but overall IHS contact with the base plate will still play a part. Also worth noting is that I've actually used Noctua's NTH1 thermal paste on both tests just to ensure there was no variation between the two, but even the thermal paste you use isn't going to greatly affect the test results. Another thing to consider is Noctua's NFA12s against the NFA15s on the NHD15. From this testing, it may indicate that while both fans perform exceptionally, the NFA12s may have slightly better static pressure optimized performance which may be how it's able to more effectively pass air through the heatsink and dissipate heat away from the CPU. But while the NFA15s didn't outperform the NFA12s, the added bonus is going to be the ability to run these at a lower RPM and still offer exceptional CFM performance. Another thing to bear in mind though is going to be fin density. While the NHD15 has a much larger dual heatsink design, the NH212A actually has a really dense fin array meaning that it should have a much larger surface area technically than the NHD15, which will greatly help in dissipating heat. So with all these considerations, this may point to why we've seen such a different result when using the NHD15, but the final consideration I'm going to offer is simply going to be margin of error. I could redo both of these tests on both coolers, but at the end of the day, the results are not going to change that drastically. But what does this mean for the NHD15 though? Despite not coming out on top in today's testing, you absolutely should not dismiss this cooler. Admittedly, the NHD15 is actually quite overkill for a Ryzen 5 5600X, even if it's overclocked, so you may find that it is actually better suited to higher core count CPUs. Truthfully speaking though, you can't go wrong with this or the NH212A anyway. Both will perform very closely regardless, and the only consideration you should really have is how much space you actually have for a CPU air cooler and whether your system can actually accommodate either this or the NH212A and what kind of performance you're looking to get out of your CPU and also the actual price you're willing to pay for an air cooler. And based on today's results, maybe that's why Noctua feel the need to charge extra for the NH212A over the NHD15. Even Noctua themselves have claimed that the NH212A will actually outperform a lot of 140mm coolers. I just didn't expect it to be their own NHD15. Now this isn't the last that you've seen of these coolers as I will be reassessing them in the new year when I take a look at my brand new testing methodology which I will be explaining in a different video so make sure you subscribe for when that goes live. That's it for today's video though, 
Thanks to Nocturne for sending out the NHD15 along with the NH212A for me to test for you guys. Let me know your thoughts on today's testing and what you think of both of these coolers. Would you do anything differently or would you like to see the NHD15 up against Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4 or even the Cyfuma 2? Let me know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. Thank you and I'll see you next time.